hello everyone and today we're gonna have like a new step-by-step -step opening with the black pieces against d4 uh, not while ago one of my students asked me Maya I have a tournament so could you please show me something that I can learn within like five to ten minutes and to still have a good and decent openings against my opponents so let's get started it begins like a classic Benoni d4 Knight of six, c4, c5, d5, and instead of those classic options that uh, leads to Benoni with g6, d6, e6, but e6 is a typical modern Benoni, even b5, Volga Gambit, you just go with e5. Uh, makes not much sense and looks pretty weird, you have to admit. But unlike Benoni, where you place your dark square bishop, I like to call it the dragon bishop on g7. King's Indian, where you do the same. Volga Gambit, where you once again place your bishop on g7. Here, your dark square bishop is gonna go on e7. So when they play knight c3, and everybody will play like this, you play normal d6, they go e4. And what's your plan? What's the main idea of the check Benoni? You always go with the following setup and following moves for black. So you always first play bishop e7. So what's the point of bishop e7? You develop your bishop and you're preparing yourself to make sure it castle. Now they have three options. Uh, statistically, most of the guys who face the check Benoni, they go for g3. And if they play g3, that absolutely changes nothing regarding your play. You always go for a castle. And when they play bishop g2, a very unusual, but at the same time, very original setup begins with the 98. And now most of you might say, oh, so are we going for some sort of like break with f5? Be very patient and be very careful with it. Yes, we'd like to go with some f5 at some point, but not the way you probably think it should be like this. Because, as you know, uh, breaking with f5 straight away, it will give an option to white to take on f5 and to get a good control and grip on e4 right into the center of the board, which is in King's Indian. In King's Indian, uh, that actually uh, prevents and blocks the bishop on g7. In these type of games, that blocks the bishop on e7. So, let's say they go knight g2. Do you break with f5? Not. You still carry on with your plan. Your knight goes on d7. You probably don't understand anything. Why is this knight moving here? I'll show you. It's a very important piece in order to uh, simply realize one of your main ideas. When they go for a castle, you just go g6. Aha! For the first time, we're seeing the point of these ideas. Uh, I just need to tell you one thing. Usually, if they go with bishop e2, bishop d3, and they give you an option of playing bishop g5 to swap off the dark square bishops, you should never miss a chance. Here, unfortunately, we can't play bishop g5 uh, because they will always oppose us with f4. And it's going to remind me of the King's Indian reversed when we take they would just recapture by pawn and now our bishop wastes tempo they just build up a pretty strong center and they're just going to kill us afterwards in the center with more of space on the king's side so we can play bishop g5 so why do we play g6 in order to play knight g7 why do we play knight g7 in order to break with f5 why do we need knight on d7 in order to secure easier uh, possibility with f5 but how what happens if they play tempo move that nobody usually uh, misses and everybody goes with bishop h6 you just go with the knight g7 and when you go with the knight g7 you're uh, you're actually threatening to play now bishop g5 swapping off these bishops immediately when they play queen d2 no more bishop g5 and even f5 doesn't seem to be working that fast but at this moment it could be possible but now you'll see the point of having the knight on d7 so your knight goes on f6 and this knight 
threatens to go on g4 to harass this bishop i apply this couple of times in my blitz games and it easily goes in blitz in this active rapid time controls and it really works well for black players so when they play h3 to stop knight g4 you it looks like aha uh -huh, they now prevented knight g4 and for the time being this bishop on h6 is going to be one of the strongest pieces in white's position well it looks like that but you don't have to worry it's it it's not going to be like that so what's the point and how should we play in this position king h8 opening up g8 square for the knight bringing the knight back on g8 harassing the bishop on h6 with tempo because if we win it uh, by the way they cannot even play but i i don't know like a3 with uh, it's called uh, some sort of uh, typical uh, queen side action with a b4 but then you play knight g8 so what are we threatening if they go like this boom we play f5 then we're gonna bring the knight back on f6 or we don't even have to do it it's just important that this bishop on g7 is not as bad as the dark square bishop in the king's india from another point of view if they after a3 knight g8 i don't know they just carry on with the plan you just take it they take the queen boom and you trap the queen that's a very common trick and uh, usually weak players fall for that and finally those who give up bishop for the knight thank you so much because now i'm gonna have an easy f5 bishop g5 h5 h4 controlling the dark squares bringing the knight on uh, f6 if needed and attacking the center but mainly i want to push my pawn up to f4 and break on the dark squares a very lovely game for black but when they go with the bishop on e3 you just play f5 and the rest of the game you just you just have to carry on in the most logical fashion and you play like a, a, an improved version of the king's indian let's say they don't go like this they go bishop d3 does it change anything nothing you just go castle they go h3 you just go 98 and Da -da -da -da. we threaten bishop g5 if they let us go with that if they play like lots of guys make mistake g4 they think they would stop f5 boom you just exchange the dark square bishops and you have a very nice game on the dark squares let's say they go knight you need to bishop g5 thank you so much i'm gonna exchange the dark square bishops i'm fine let's say they go with knight f3 to stop bishop g5 now I go with the knight d7 in order to prepare g6 followed by knight g7 followed by knight f6. So when they go with castles, g6, I'm creating a g7 square for the knight. Knight comes there and do I have to explain you what the plan is? Knight f6, king goes on h8, bring the knight back to g8, go after the bishop and eventually break with f5. And finally, for those who play knight f3, knight bd7 bishop e2 castles castles 98. once again absolutely the same thing here i'm gonna show you a game of magnus carlsen played back to 2007 but before that let me just show you how typically white players should go after this they should go with a3 because this type of structure it's called feather pawn structure should always be broken even uh, sorry uh, either by b4 or by f4 so how do they have to play against this they have to go with b4 in these positions because f4 would just open our game on the dark squares and would give us bishop f6 followed by knight e5 and a good version of benoni so when they go with uh, a3 we go g6 bishop h6 always taking this bishop there with tempo knight defends with tempo queen d2 what's the point of queen d2 this is very important for white players who play against the check benoni you never can play f5 it's too early man because knight is pinned rook is pinned they threaten very nasty knight e6 so you gotta show like a great patience knight on f6 threatening knight g4 fighting against the bishop so when they play h3 you once again hide your king on h8 open up g8 square for the knight and after any b4 you just go with b6 any knight e1 or to go with the knight on d3 you just go knight g8 once again you threaten knight h6 followed by bishop g5 they go back and you play f5 
I really like this type of Jack Benoni positions and I believe this is going to give you a great uh, solution to your opening problems in a very specific way against different openings. Finally, let me just show you that game of Magnus Carlsen played against Peter Heine and Nilsson. Nilsson, instead of a3, played rook to b1 with pretty much the same idea, coped with uh, breaking on the queen side with b4. Magnus played g6 and Nilsson absolutely underestimated his idea of bishop g5. I think that the 91 was one of the causes of his loss. Bishop g5, played knight to d3, and what are you doing here? You actually play kind of a King's Indian type of the game without a weak dark square bishop, because we know how many times that bishop ends up being weak, and in how many very rare occasions it actually ends up being great. So here, it's always a great job if you manage to exchange it after a queen c1 queen e7 f4 and now just enjoy uh, in a very uh, lovely positional approach by Carlsen himself with the black pieces he takes uh, Heine and Nilsson captured an f4 by Quinn and Carlsen played f6 looks very weird but if you have a second look at this position you will realize that he wants to jump with the knight on e5 to fortify control of e5 and that's what happened and when the guy captured Magnus captured and opened up the best blocking square against the passed pawn that's a very strong strategy you always so that's a strategical approach and advice for all of you should jump with the knight on d6 and fix and block the passed pawn like this so after queen e3 uh he probably wish he could have gone with knight a6 but c5 was hanging so he first played b6 rook b on f1 played bishop d7 h4 played knight a6 i really have to say that no matter how this position looks uh at first glance ideal in terms of development uh, for white and everything else i don't see a clear weakness uh, and um, a single weakness in the black camp after h5 magnus played f5 uh, and he now threatened f4 he now threatened f4 uh, to slowly take an initiative so hans hansen sorry nilsen played g3 uh, magnus captured bishop d3 captured on e4 and took on f2 and played rook f8 so just like you see he just went for this thing queen g7 here rook d8 and a question could be uh, what could he do in this type of the game but he was actually very happy to play this type of an end game where the d6 pawn would fall after everything so after queen g5 h6 queen here queen g7 captured on g3 and magnus just uh managed to solidify his king to solidify his position there is no check in the camp so he came uh, with a couple of checks came on with this captured here played queen f6 and after queen f4 won the piece a beautiful game by magnus uh, it just shows you how should you play uh, these type of games uh, in the Czech Benoni and of course teaches you not, not only plan with uh, cope with 98 g6 knight g7 knight d7 knight f6 but also an importance of exchanging the dark squared bishop with the bishop g5 hope you like this Czech Benoni step-by-step uh, -step opening and let's just see your feedback and how are you going to like this type of opening thanks for the lecture and see you next time bye bye